Hi everyone, this video is to how to make a, a simple HF RF choke um, and hopefully as you know RF choke blocks uh, common mode currents travelling down the outside of your coax this stops any stray RF uh, entering the house or the shack uh, and likewise it stops uh, local interference from, from your household devices uh, travelling up the coax uh, on, the, on the outside uh, back up to the antenna uh, now I'm far from an expert, so after much research uh, on on the internet, uh, I plumbed on the uh, comprehensive work of now silent key Steve Hunt G3 TXQ, uh, and I'll include uh, his website link into uh, the video description at the bottom. Basically, uh, based on Steve's work, uh, a good choke uh, has high uh, impedance and is resistance resistive. Sorry, over the frequencies. Uh, that you want to cover. So in Steve's excellent chart, uh, this means selecting the best fit for the frequencies you want to cover. Now this is Steve's chart for a type 31 ferrite core uh, and type 31 is a type of mix uh, and basically you're looking for uh, a dark light green coverage of the bands and see you can see the frequencies and the amateur bands of the grey lines uh, and also uh, the black uh, resistive element. Um, so based on uh, Steve's work, I've gone for uh, 12 turns of RG8 on a Type 31 toroid, um, and that's, uh, I think, the best for covering um, from 80 metres, uh, getting up towards, uh, well, 15 metres and uh, maybe 10 metres into the yellow, uh, but uh, I think that's a good, a good mix. Um, different types of ferrite mixes uh, affect different frequencies so you'll see uh, if you look on the link at Steve's work uh, uh, his test results for other uh, ferrite mixes other than type 31. So these are the parts you need to make this RF chalk uh, the key one being this uh, ferrite ring uh, I've written on this one uh, because when they're like that you can't tell what they are uh, so this is an FT240-31 uh, 240 is the size uh, and type 31 is the, is the mix uh, and that's obviously the key element. Uh, that's uh, a ferrite, ferrite ring uh, and from Mouser Electronics here in the UK so there's the, uh, the cord. Uh, a weatherproof box big enough to fit the ring in and the coax turns uh, and allow you a bit of wriggle room to do your soldering. Uh, this one's 100mm square some RG58 uh, and two SO239 sockets. Uh, I've gone from the round fitting ones here. Uh, and other than maybe a few cable ties, uh, that's about it. So one job to do is to drill the box uh, to accept the SO239 sockets, one on each side. So that'll be roughly centered there on both sides. Uh, and the uh, diameter needed is uh, 16 mil, uh, 16 mil drill. Uh, very easy uh, to drill through this plastic. So there you go, box drilled, possibly one of the easiest drilling jobs you're ever going to do. And the uh, SO239s just fit through there uh, and screw on the back. Uh, so that's the first job done. So as you can see here, I've loosely fitted the two SO239 sockets and bent the pins back uh, to allow for easy soldering. Next job is to prepare one end of the coax, uh, solder it up ready uh, and then it's time to wrap it around the core uh, and fit it into the box. So here's the coax prepared, uh, trimmed to fit the SO239 socket. Uh, I've left a reasonable tail on the braid because uh, you're never quite sure how much you're going to need to solder under there. Uh, so now it's a case of uh, wrapping around the ring. So if you remember we're going for 12 turns through the ring um, so it's six round one way and then back the other way um, so the uh, the coax exits at the opposite end of the ring and to get going uh, this needs to be cable tied uh, otherwise you're going to be wrestling with the uh, coax uh, cable ties just help keep it all in place uh, and you're going for for tight turns um, so you'll uh, you'll see how I've done this in a sec so there you can see first cable tie in place 
to get the ball rolling and it's a case of winding round uh, you might need to use a few more cable ties to uh, to keep it tight so remember each time you pass through the center of the core that's a turn so we've got one two three four five i'm um, having to hang on to it now uh, it's having to wrestle with it a bit uh, so it's maybe time to put another cable tie on uh, and then we'll pass through the center of the core and then back around the other way and pop out the other end so you can see now I'm working my way up the other side uh, I didn't need a cable tie there this is the the third choke I've made so I've obviously uh, developed the knack uh, so you can see here not quite finished uh, one two three four five six is the one through the middle seven eight nine ten uh, so two more to go and out the other side so here we are, uh, 12 turns, one to start with, the first pass through, two, three, four, five, six is the one that goes through the middle, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Uh, so here's the end of the coax. Now uh, here's a tip, uh, don't cut this yet, uh, don't cable tie it on, leave it loose because this is the end you've got to prepare uh, and if you were preparing that close, cable tied on, it's all a bit tight, uh, so just leave a, a little bit of slack. Uh, so you can uh, you've got some room to to work and then once you've prepared this end you can cut it off um, and uh, cable tie it on uh, and obviously you've now got no room to manoeuvre in terms of error um, so take care when uh, preparing this end because you've only got one go at getting it looking like that which is a fairly simple job but as you know when the pressure's on accidents do happen so there you go the other end now cable tied on uh, both ends just now need uh, tinning up with some solder uh, ready for connecting into the box. So as you can see, there's a snug fit in this 100mm square box, um, which is now just a case of connecting it to these, uh, these two SL239s. So hopefully you can see, uh, coax is now tinned, uh, ready. Uh, be careful with RG58 and and small coax, uh, small diameter coax, uh, can easily melt the core. And also remember <clears throat> to tin up the, uh, the ends of the SO239 connectors. Now to fit it. So here's the ferrite ring uh, soldered in. It can be a fiddly job getting down into these tight spaces. Um, and two things to remember, uh, try not to touch the coax with the solder iron or the box like I did there uh, you can forget as you're concentrating on all the little tight bits uh, so the last thing to do uh, well not the last thing but uh, one thing to do now is to check um, just continuity uh, just to make sure your soldering's fine um, so across the outside the coax that's fine the inside yep and across from no continuity there, no continuity there. Outside connected, inside connected. So now what I do, uh, I still haven't tightened up these SO239s, is to just to put slacken these off and put some uh, sealant on. Uh, some silicon sealant and then just tighten them up and let them dry uh, and that uh, uh, keeps the weather out. Uh, this is a, a weatherproof box, uh, the lid has a, a gasket round, there is a right way up, there's a little uh, drip hole there in case any water gets in. Um, there is a view that you should vent these boxes um, with a small hole at the bottom, a drip hole, so if water does get in it can get out. Uh, and likewise, even in sealed boxes, uh, when you're transmitting, uh, there could be condensation as this air heats and cools. Um, I've got um, two uh, chokes in use now for over six months um, with uh, 200 watts running through them uh, and they're looking fine. Uh, and uh, I'll show you those uh, uh, next. And what I forgot to say um, was this is quite sturdy in here. I think if that was fixed onto a wall like mine are then it's not going anywhere but the beauty of these boxes uh, these screw pegs actually stick up and you can get through the back of them uh, so I cable tie 
the uh, core to these uh, just to keep it in position. Uh, I'll just show you that now. So there you go, two final cable ties just wrapped around those posts. That's not going anywhere. So here we are, upper wall. Uh, here's a choke on an off-centre fed dipole. Uh, this has been up here uh, since the beginning of the December, so six months now. Uh, it's a sealed box, a weatherproof box. There's no vent holes. Like I say, you can take the option of putting a, a vent drain hole there uh, with maybe some, some mesh, uh, maybe a fine neck curtain to stop insects getting in. Uh, but as you can see there, that's six months use at 200 watts, uh, no issues whatsoever. And following on from the DX Commander series of videos, uh, the garden's finally greening up nicely in the spring. DX Commander base still there, radials completely buried now under the lawn, uh, all looking good.